Welcome, guys. It is Deconversion Therapy, the podcast. This is Bonnie down here in still hot, despite it being (laughs) January, Florida. Up there in cooler, but not below zero. Not yet. Is Karen. It's Tennessee. I mean, Karen. You're never going to get that cold. (laughs) And listen, if if you can pick two worst political states, let me hear it. Because I fucking swear. But... Yeah, it's going to get down to two this week, overnight. Oh, That's like the coldest ever. And my daughter just went back up northeast for school. We're going to be colder than her. Wow. Let me let me just remind you of what it was like growing up here mm-hmm. when the fall clothes would come out and we'd be going back to school shopping and you'd be so excited because you think, oh my gosh, look, they're sweaters, they're long sleeve shirts. And you realize, well, maybe you need two of those in Florida for that. I know. <laughs> That one week where it gets a little cold. I remember I had two sweaters that I loved, and that was it. I remember, that was it. yep, that there was, especially with Seventeen Magazine, you'd get their yeah. back-to-school issue. And there they yeah. would be in these adorable outfits with, like, tartan skirts or whatever it was. Yeah. And you're just like, ah, yeah. that's wool. If we can yeah. get that in a chemise, um, <laughs> yeah, we were always burning. But it did snow. Remember when we were really young? It snowed yeah, that it was one a day. Joke. It was flakes. It was, it was flakes. a joke, but it was it was a, a freak technicality. Of nature. Yeah, everyone yeah. was freaked out. Yeah, and good fucking luck getting any boots from your parents Mm -hmm. uh, doing back-to-school shopping. Like, no, you're going to have the sandals you need. I know. (laughs) Oh, it was so sad. It was, Um, but but I miss it. I miss sun. You miss sun? Yeah, I can see missing sun. And honestly, okay, so I'm a realtor, people, which you probably (laughs) know, Uh. All but two of my snowbird clients have come down and they are they are hurting my heart mm-hmm. because they need so much. And and honestly, all they really need is to know how to log on to shit and watch TV. <laughs> you would think that this is all they've come down here to do. But it's particularly gruesome this year because the weather has been gray for the past two and a half weeks. Gray oh. or raining or cold. So guess what? They're all homebound. And they're a little they crabbier. Can't. Right. Yep. Yep. So they, they there's only so much going out to dinner they can do. Mm-hmm. There's only so much uh, they can't go for walks. They can't go sit on the beach. They can't go to the pool. They can't do any tennis. No pickleball. No golf. So it's just. But you know what they can me out do with my TV. T- they, yeah, not well. They can't watch television till I show up. Apparently, <laughs> I I even left notes this year on little things like press the green button, and I drew the shape of the green button to watch TV. Didn't work. Bring markers work. so you can make it green. Um, what they can do is call Bonnie, and you know what? That's all they if do. They're listening. You should. You should all call Bonnie <laughs> and just say if they. <laughs> listening how then we got I a flush, bigger problem how do i flush the toilet there is a big okay <laughs> oh karen let me just let me just tell you the last one i went in to show the guy how to use the remote and he's like okay well what do we do if we want to rewind it if we want to rewind live tv like pick a channel that we oh, can do shit. the replay on and he goes go to go to fox go to fox and i'm like yeah. i can't stay in here for that nope. <laughs> That and was can, that was to me the big saying something. I can't stand here for that. You saw the the uh, meme about everyone when they go home for Christmas, delete Fox yes. off the yeah. channel. I swear. Um, well, they won't be able to figure out how to get it back on. Right. That's yeah. the thing. They can't watch it. And then the whole United States would change within weeks. Everyone would get nicer. They wouldn't follow conspiracy fucking things. That's the thing. I don't dislike anybody because of their political bent, but it's the hatred that Fox stirs up 
yeah. that has changed people. We've talked about that before. I anyway, dislike so, plenty of people. Uh, so <laughs> if you want to be on that list, please do. In fact, that brings up, please rate and review us. Uh, and what I mean by that is five stars. Um, on Spotify, <laughs> because we knew it as we get bigger and more people find us, they are not going to listen, but they are not going to like what they assume is speaking against the almighty God. And we've gotten a few reviews that have lowered us on Spotify, and that is totally okay. But, you know, you're sitting right there. You're listening to this. Go ahead and just, you know, Spotify it up. And Apple... You can definitely leave a review. I don't know if you can on Spotify, but we thank you. The reviews are just so nice. Yeah, it is funny how people with axes to grind can, you know, show up and and lowball us with stars that well, mess up just, the average. Yeah, they're like, I did not like her on TikTok. What is this? Oh, let me go to her <laughs> bio. Let me go to the podcast one. And that's fine. It doesn't. Don't believe your low reviews. Don't believe your high reviews. You know, it's one of those. Also, for this let me, episode... Let me be an old fart, though. Let me also say to the the people who f- figure out where to find you and give a low review to us, people, get a job. <gasps> That's Go very out Fox and get a news. Job. That is Fox News right there. See... I don't care. Do something more valuable with your time. You know, God's ways are higher than job ways. I want to say (laughs) thank you to Tracy for sponsoring this episode. She gave tithes and offerings to our Venmo, everything there. If you're like, how do I find this? How do I send in a funny story? How do I find out more about their personal lives and and get in their business sponsors, (laughs) newsletter, you know, do all that stuff. You'll find it in the details of this. And we're not going to keep harboring on harboring, Uh, doing something. Yeah, we're not going to keep talking about that. That's what I wanted to say. But thanks, Tracy. Tracy, you're a top-notch gal. You're prime. Thank you very much. All right, listener, just so you know, we had to stop and take a little break because I uh, had to take a Ritalin. I cannot focus. I don't know. Sometimes I can. Sometimes I can't. But I think it's because I know so much about what I'm about to say to everyone that... (laughs) I thought you just meant because I know know so much much in general. That it's all flying around in my brain, you know, rather than having like, I don't know anything about it. I have these two things to say. I have too much. So maybe that's it. What I'm going to tell you, it's about Elvis. And I just listened to a podcast this morning just... For a refresher, and I'm not going to mention the name of it. It was mostly good, but it was two younger women, and they were talking about Elvis and his life and just how they missed the point so many times on different parts of it because they didn't live through it and they didn't totally grasp right. the feeling, right. the atmosphere, what was pioneering, what was... Just all of that wasn't working when they were talking about it. And I almost wanted to yeah. go to Spotify and give them one start. No, I thought they were very <laughs> good. I would never do that. But I feel. Because that's a lot of shit. Elvis, Elvis's body of work was so vast. How can you condense that? And just the atmosphere at the so time it's nearly and impossible. what was going on and how he was perceived. They sort of put it in a today sort of feeling. You know what I mean? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So I'm not going to tell you the full story of Elvis since we're going to talk about his spirituality, his Christianness and all that. But he was he was well known. He was a well known guy. He had a twin, and that is important, who died at childbirth. And this comes out because I didn't yeah. realize his mother told him right when he was like two or three, sing out loud when there's a full moon and your twin will hear you. 
So can you imagine... That's not creepy at all. (laughs) How that impacts, one, your singing, your responsibility, your survivor guilt. Like, that's sort of fucked up. Um, And the whole full moon thing is... I don't know. But he grew up very, very poor in Tupelo, Mississippi. And I was listening to a documentary called um, The Searcher, Elvis Presley, and Tom Petty and Bruce Springsteen. uh, All these people were talking about him. And Bruce Springsteen was saying, you know, when you were born somewhere like Tupelo and you're poor or where I was born, it plays out in your music. You always have inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is why we're not singers, Bonnie. South Florida is not (laughs) rife with inspiration to push us forward. It's, I will, I will agree with that. If you grew up here, it doesn't give you a lot of inspiration uh, for art. But there was a recording studio in Miami where some people under the Stigwood organization Mm. record label came and they put out some amazing content in the early 70s. That's right. (laughs) Here it comes. Eric Clapton. (laughs) One of those. That's right. (laughs) And you know who else was under the Robert Stigwood label? The Bee Gees. (laughs) <laughs> no, very funny. So, um, yep, that's right. So one of Eric Clapton's most amazing, uh, you know, mm-hmm. gotcha. albums. They all recorded that in Miami. Same with the Bee Gees. That, that crazy? Is, uh, like so from them? interesting. I just love it. No, go on. <laughs> I think what was happening was they were in England too long and it was gray and bleak and cold. And they were like, oh, my God, what is this gold ball in the sky called sun? I think they were like. And I think that that speaks to <laughs> Where sun. can I go to sniff crack <laughs> off a bikini clad woman? That's what I think. But nonetheless. Okay, crack wasn't around then, but go ahead. Nonetheless. But back to Elvis. Elvis. Do you know off the top of your head what year he was born? Earlier uh, than we Earlier? were. <laughs> yes. He well, was I'm asking. Born early-ish, and uh, I told you I'm not going to tell you his whole Days life your... story. I'm going to no, leave I'm... out important things. Well, hang on. I'm asking because, in theory, he could still be alive. He wouldn't be that old like there are people older than elvis would have been who are still alive like mel brooks my dad yep so he's born in in 1935 okay so there you go did you know what a one name thing is called mon instead of synonymously it's mononymously I don't think that's Thank accurate. You. That's great. Uh, that's what okay. Wikipedia says. So, um, oh, so it must be true. So he grew up with his parents being in the Assemblies of God Church, which is a lot of Pentecostal jumping around, hooting and hollering, okay. shaking, dancing, and he loved the feeling of it. They were super poor. You got mm-hmm. to run around your neighborhood. It was very integrated because. Where yeah. he grew up, because he was so, because he was so small, because he was so <laughs> poor, he was in one of those small clapboard box houses that looked like someone's, you know, lawn she shed. shed. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. And there were a lot of impoverished black people around. So it was very integrated and he would sneak into the black churches he would go up to the podium, he would shake his groove thing and all that, and it was sort of built into him that music and movement went together. Because you know he what they do. Ends, uh, they do. They do. Um, and we know that he's one of the original uh, shakers on TV because he ended up on these different TV shows, and not only did he make women go, oh, guys are sexy when they can move, but mm-hmm. he was known as being demonic, like 
a lot of people, even Frank Sinatra, thought that he, you know, had some kind of devilment or that he was promoting the devil's music because this was way out of left field. Well, and Frank was very Catholic. Very. I'm sure. And and I I bet you also he was jealous. He well, does you know not what? strike me as the type who was very excited to share the spotlight with anybody. And he did, which is interesting. He had Elvis on his show and paid him what was today a million dollars for eight minutes. Wow. But it was because it would promote his show. Like it was well, his sure. most watched show. And it's a really cute little segment. But at the same time, like Elvis did have like sexual charisma out the yin yang. Also was a little fucked up by purity culture. And we'll get into that. But as far as Frank Sinatra went, you know, Frank Sinatra sort of had the real mafia. So Elvis yeah. had what was called the Memphis Mafia, which was really just his mostly white best friends. And they called themselves the Memphis Mafia because they yeah. were his entourage. And they all wore this jewelry pendant that had TCB and a lightning rod mm-hmm. for taking care of business. Yeah. Not TCB from the song Taking Care of Business. And not TCB Why This Can't Be Yogurt. <laughs> Neither of those. But while I'm looking Neither up things, I found so many other things. There's this guy called, instead of Elvis, it's called Elvis Story on YouTube. He's in his 40s, oh. really thick New York accent. And they're just all these YouTube people, all these groups, all these organizations, Elvis Fest, that know his life inside and out, like wild. And I'm talking people who weren't born even when Elvis was alive. These can be people that were born after that, too. So he definitely has the whole draw. Let me also tell you this random fact. This lady that I work out with the other day, she just says to me, so you know my husband's dad's an Elvis impersonator. I'm like, of course I did not know that. So I just thought it was such a hilarious, oh, and you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, um, what what a fun fact to just slip in a sentence as though it's not surprising. I want to know how much do they make? That's what I want to know. I know. He also has uh, sort of a distant relative, maybe his cousin's kid. Brandon Presley ran for governor as a Democrat in Mississippi during this last election tour. And he might pop up or election campaign. He didn't win. We might see him pop up in other things. But it's really interesting. I'm going to get into some of the Memphis Mafia. But Mm -hmm. we know what happened is that Elvis Presley was one of the first ones to come out with the sound that he did because he grew up listening to black churches, gospel music, and black artists. And Mm -hmm. there was someone who was looking for a white person with the black sound, although Mm -hmm. he also promoted people on his list who were black people, but he wanted someone to do that because you could get in more doors. And here came Elvis. A lot of people those were, will say. Those are really separate markets back in very, the day. Yeah. Very. Uh, different radio stations. markets. Very. Per se. Mm-hmm. Yep. And a lot of people today would say that this is appropriation and all that. And people do. In that day... You can, it, it's hard not to judge the person in the industry, but to judge history. It's easier for yeah. us to go, that's how it was, than to be yeah. like, I'm mad at that publisher and that person. And in fact, we know Elvis actually did give rise and to other black artists. I'm not saying any of this is okay. Hopefully you guys understand that. Yes, absolutely. One of the people that he had gotten his ideas, his movement, some of his sound is Little Richard. I don't know if I told you, but I was driving in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, 
a long time ago. I mean, 15 years ago, maybe. And the SUV right next to me, you know, you're pre- if you're a driver and someone's mm-hmm. in the passenger seat, you're pretty <laughs> close to them. And I yeah. look, and it's little Richard, and he looks at me. And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck is happening? It was one of those, you know, it was not quick, but it was definitely, how does this information correlate compute. that I'm in Tennessee? <laughs> compute. And yeah, he was around here, so that made sense later. Let me tell you my little Richard thing, too. I was walking down Sunset Boulevard one night on the way to my car from whatever show I was coming from. Scientology. Yes, that's right. So there were people on the sidewalk looking up as though something was happening in the sky. There was somebody hanging out of a hotel window yelling down at them. And I look up. It's little Richard. And I'm like, why is little Richard what? hanging out of a hotel room, yelling at people on the street? And then years later, I come to find out maybe he lived at like the Hyatt house on Sunset, oh, which was right. also called the Riot House. And yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, this all makes sense now. And I could be wrong about which hotel it was. So if anybody is out there who knows the details and it's wrong, I'm sorry. But yeah. I did look up and see little Richard and like, oh, okay, such is life. Bye-bye. He, <laughs> Kept he walking. got around. He got around. And yeah. I mean, Elvis, you can clearly see what was happening and how he got his sound, how he got all those things. But what yeah. he really wanted to be is he wanted to be a gospel singer because there were these terrible, awful quartets that were white people singing some gospel music in that day. And that was really about the only thing you could look forward to. There weren't a lot of choices. There was no uh, sex symbol celebrity musician that Elvis could go, I want to be that. He was that. He was the one that ended up being what everyone would try to attain later. So what he really wanted to be is in one of these quartets that would sing on stage to like Joseph did the da 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 Jericho uh, and someone else did Jericho, but and think how little th- things there were to influence a kid of I don't know thirteen fifteen years old. In the yeah. years that he was thirteen or fifteen, uh, let's see, school, church. Nope. That wouldn't work in that's, that. Yeah, that was going all right. That, that's kind of it. It wasn't like there was social media. There were not a lot of movies if you didn't have a lot of money to go to them. Television. Right. Just all those things weren't. There was just a big black hole of being poor in Mississippi. And so everything just happened by happenstance and then his hard work, and you can go watch your own damn shows about him. There's a bunch. However, (laughs) the religious part. So when he was on the Ed Sullivan show, uh, no one really plays this much at all because I didn't know it. He talked them into letting him sing a Christian song called Peace in the Valley because it was his mother's favorite song. And Ed Sullivan was like, no, we've never had a religious song on this show and we're not going to start now. But Elvis talked him into it. Mm -hmm. So you can see that his influence with the Christianity that he grew up in was definitely had a hold on him in one way or another. Mm -hmm. When he got drafted, which is really weird because we weren't in war at that time, but he got drafted and nobody got him out of it. We weren't? No. Exactly. It was just sort of war time. So when he got drafted right on the bus when he was going to wherever, he met Charlie Hodge, who was in one of those quartet things that he liked to listen to. So they Uh bonded right away, and they bonded over gospel music and church and the Bible. So he had all these, like, small little things behind the scenes that nobody really talked about that went into his Christian faith or where he was pulling at things and all that. Before long, he comes—well, he's in Germany. He meets a 14-fucking-year-old— Priscilla. 
which is mind-boggling, and I want to get into some of that. One, I paid money, Apple TV, to watch uh-huh. the film Priscilla, because it hasn't been totally oh, released. Okay. Um, it is terrible, yet no. it is perfect. It okay. is so boring. It does nothing. Priscilla, there is no character there. She is so vacuous. And then, sadly, every time I look at the interviews, it's the fucking same. And we're going to get into some discrepancies with her story. But, you know, he he was sending people, go find girls and bring them to our parties. And here's 14-year-old right. Priscilla. She has said on talk shows, you know, I was o- older mentally than a lot of the 14-year-olds. Yeah. Well, also... She was very, according to the movies and every interview she's done, you do not see that at all. So maybe she's told herself that's why they worked or whatever. But she definitely didn't have a worldliness. She didn't have, you know, she wasn't like a street smart girl. So I'm not sure what any of that whole not realizing no, year 14 was. But at that time, to have her hang out and then to have her live at Graceland when she was like 15, Elvis had to make a deal with the parents of her and say, I really like her. I want to protect her, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. So she was definitely groomed all into this situation. And What is interesting is he did not have sex with her. According to her, according to some people, they would say, yes, they did. But either way, there are two or three reasons that people and Priscilla and Elvis's housekeeper and all these people said that they married. One is because Elvis gave his word to her father that he would protect her that that's why he wanted her around. Right. Two, people said that they had had sex, and Priscilla threatened that she would go tell people, (laughs) you got me when I was 14, and we had sex when I was, what, 16, 18, whatever, or 17, whatever it is, and that would ruin his career, But whatever happened, it was an eight-minute wedding ceremony. It was very quickly done. People said that he didn't want to marry her. So whatever his reasoning was, if he was keeping her a virgin, it goes into all the purity culture because he was having sex all through that time. But supposedly not with Priscilla. Correct. And Margaret, yeah. Sybil Shepherd later, like a lot of people, some actress named Anne Helm or something. So, but then there are other people that were saying he was weirdly not having sex with them. So some who were his co-stars, that was where he found his easiest little catches for the romping. Um, one of those was Julie Parrish. She was in Paradise Hawaiian style. And she later said, one time on set, I had a pain in my side, a side effect of whatever. Mm -hmm. And Elvis scooped me up, carried me into his trailer, shut the door, and the crowd outside or the people outside were like, oh, what's happening with them? Ooh, who? And he was totally oblivious of that because he was putting his hands on the hurting part and praying over her. Oh. So he was not into the sex at all with her. And the same with a Playboy actress, June Wilkinson. She said that she, quote, met Elvis on the set of King Creole. He invited her to dinner at the Wiltshire Hotel. And then Elvis gave me a tour of his suite. He sat me on his bed in his bedroom for two hours. He sang to me, and that was it. So there are a lot of people who were like, he, it was weird. He wouldn't have sex with me when I'm right there. 
I think that this makes total sense because there was something I was recently watching by somebody, of course, on TikTok saying that men treat women differently from one another. There are some that they treat like, okay, you're, I'm you, I'm going to have sex with. And then some they will put on more of a pedestal and be like, you are pure. I'm going to take care of you and, and treat you with the utmost respect. So it sounds like the ones that you're telling their tale are the ones that he had on a different plane. And Priscilla was probably. One was the playboy actress. When was a Playboy star? Yeah. You know, you don't know what is in somebody's brain deciding which plane to put people on. Cause there's no yeah. rhyme or reason to it. But uh, there, but I think it makes sense that the people who thought, well, surely he would have banged me are like, well, maybe well, he respected you and had you on a different plane. Or maybe know. the women really had to break through and be the first to jump on him. And some were waiting for him to make the move. And I mean, there's a lot of speculation. But obviously, with purity culture, there is something, and Priscilla said it in her book, like he was proud that they, he and Priscilla, didn't have sex for a long time. It was sort yeah. of this... I'm scoring some for God. So I'm wondering how he sort of went ahead and, and had it with some and some he didn't. But there was a lot of mama's boy stuff involved, too, in the whole purity culture thing. And after yeah. he and Priscilla got married and they had Lisa Marie, it would, there was a big issue because Elvis had always said, I can't have sex with women who have children. And that was his own fucking okay. wife. So, <laughs> so he said that about his wife? He said that, yeah. She fit into oh, that once. Okay. So there was a lot of fucked up stuff. And I think it definitely goes back to purity culture even before purity rings were around. Yeah. Well, and we were part of that. And what you're just taking for granted that a lot of people don't or know, and they might not, is he was in a ton of movies. Yes. He was in a ton Tons. of movies where he had his shirt off and he sang and he danced and he cavorted and became this huge idol. Just enormous. Absolutely. He really did, and I could get into, like, how those movies screwed up his career that he wanted and how, you know, his uh, advisor manager really screwed him over and all these things. But, again, you can watch those in the movies. But we definitely know that he he was mentally between that situation of being a godly called person blessed with a voice this yeah. goes back to jessica simpson's story to use and praying before every concert he did with his little posse memphis mafia that god will bless this and use his voice to then swinging the other way with sleeping with people and doing drugs so he had that whole human thing, but on this huge scale and public scale. Yeah, and I think drugs do a, a really good number on you, too. Like, you could have one persona when you're sober, and then the minute you start drinking or taking something else, you're a totally different person. That could also yep. contribute to it. I mean, Absolutely. It's, it's a and complicated that was it life when you're end. that. It's a complicated life when you're that famous and trying to steer know, a career know, when there were so mm. many ways that he could have gone, like movies, TV, recording, just, you know, it's, it's just And he never thought he was good enough. Right. He never thought mm. he was good enough. And this could go back to survival guilt with the twin because his yeah. mother was always talking about that twin. So... There's obvious, like, well, I survived. I have to do twice as much. And that's why everything yeah. he did was for his mom. Now, a lot of people bring in the mama's boy thing as a big issue, not knowing that 
definitely in that day, that was more of an accepted thing and, dare I say, cultural thing. He grew up near a lot of black families with a lot of black families where it was more traditional to, hey, one day I'm going to get a lot of money and support my mom. She gave me so much. Right. And so that was more of what he did. Also, the whole thing with him meeting Priscilla at 14, I heard on a lot of these podcasts I listened to, well, he was just trash. He was a pervert. Yes and no. It was still taboo, yeah. But at the same time, he thought he was doing it like, I'm going to stay away from her till whatever, but he was probably kissing her. But the people who were arguing over mm-hmm. how old a woman needs to be to be with a man were still men. No <laughs> women's voices right. were heard in that day in politics to say, we shouldn't be, you know, uh, you shouldn't they date us care. before this they and that. No, listen. absolutely. They, oh, my God. And don't forget Jerry Lee Lewis, who was of the same uh-huh. generation as he was. Right. I want to say he married a 13-year-old. I mean, it was cousin. around the same age. And His it was a cousin. cousin. Yeah. Let me also add in, and this is a mm-hmm. complete sidebar. I have another client who talks about her cousin often and instead of his name, you know, oh, and my cousin this, and they were dating. All and right. I'm like, okay, why would you, mm-hmm. There, there's something that doesn't compute with her that I hear cousin and realize that they were dating. And I think yeah. that that's peculiar. I mean, they probably weren't related by blood. Okay. I think they weren't. Okay. She's talked but to how? me about that at but, one point. Okay. All right. You know, but a marriage. Gotcha. And so right. at the same time, though, I'm like, well, you could just call him by his name instead of saying my cousin. Oh, it that's just, true. Wouldn't you hide strange. it a tad? I agree. I don't know. I, I would think that you would just not say cousin. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. It's interesting. And and uh, anyway, but I love her so much. Anyhow, so that mm, so does her cousin. All yeah. right. So, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, a lot of the things were not excusing at all. I'm just putting them right. in the climate of the day and going, yeah, people were fucked up. Oh, another reason, a third reason people thought that Elvis married Priscilla was that the father of Priscilla was threatening that they could get the statutory rape things against Elvis unless he doesn't marry because he would be taking her across state lines when he took her with him everywhere. Now, he was cheating on her. Like a federal offense or something. There you go. He was cheating on her the whole time while she was being groomed and staying at Graceland after they got married, just on and on. They broke up because she told him she cheated on him. And that was it. He couldn't take that. So there you go. You can be like, men are shit. That was the way men were built, that society made them uh, believe that bullshit. And he definitely believed that bullshit. And we can get into that on a different podcast that we don't run. Um, Okay, so some other purity culture things or some odd things is he actually had a his first love interest on a movie, his first on-screen kiss, Dolores Hart, who did not have a relationship with him. After her last movie with Elvis, she left Hollywood to become a Benedictine (laughs) nun. Sure. And then in 2011, she did a documentary, or someone did, on her, God is the Bigger Elvis, covering their relationship. I think even though he had nothing to do with anything with her, all these small things probably add up. And all these little relationships or people that were religious had a big influence on him behind the stage and all the troubles he was going through. I think I've told this story, and I forgot till my husband told me. So uh, we went to Nashville. I was invited to like this writer's 
uh, conference. And it was at this hotel. We went to the bar and there was a couple there. Colin recognized the woman immediately as Wanda Jackson. I still didn't know who she was. She was Elvis's girlfriend for a year. He even gave her a promise ring. He wanted to get married to her. And she is now like the queen of rockabilly. She's done things with Jack White and so forth. So it was her and her husband. And after us buying them all their expensive drinks that they liked, the husband was like, yeah, one time we were at this hotel for her to do something, and it could have been in Hawaii. And the next thing we know, someone calls and says, hey, Elvis wants to see her. He heard that she's here. And the husband was like, I didn't know if I'm going to have to punch Elvis. I didn't know what was going to happen. And when he saw her, he grabbed her up because she's like 50 pounds and swung her around and all that. And, And so, yeah, They said how great Elvis was. A lot of these women who dated him said they never had sex with him, these long-term people. So I don't know about her. But I do know if he and I slept together. But you're going to have to wait till part two, where we're going to get into some crazy theories and scandals about Elvis Presley. See you next week. (laughs) 